as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Welcome to Branch Together. My name is Darren, and today we are starting and also finishing the book of Philemon. This book is just one chapter, and it's 25 verses. Today will be a uh, quick flyover of this little book. I'm going to give you a brief overview up front right now, uh, and then we'll pray and we'll read it together. Uh, and I'll close with some thoughts uh, on uh, some things I th I'm thinking about when I read this book and maybe some application. Okay, so uh, Paul wrote four books that we know of during his two-year stint in the cooler in Rome. This book we call Philemon. It's a letter to Philemon, along with the letters to the Colossians, the Ephesians, and the Philippians. We've actually read all of these uh, books recently in the, in the recent weeks here on this channel, so we should be getting a feel for what his prison letters sound like. Now, the way, these, uh, the way these letters went is they were written by Paul in prison, and then he gave them to people to be delivered to their original audience. They didn't have FedEx. So Colossians and Philemon were both sent with two guys named Tychicus and Onesimus. They were to be delivered in Colossae. Onesimus used to be Philemon's slave. This sounds like some kind of soap opera or something. Until he snuck away, stole some of Philemon's loot, and flew off to Rome, where he figured he probably wouldn't be found. Funny enough, he runs into Paul somehow, and through Paul meets Jesus. And as usual, meeting Jesus means your life gets changed. So what we're seeing in this letter is what Paul writes to Philemon. It's a letter that will be hand-delivered to Philemon and to the church there at Colossae by the person Philemon may or may not be very happy with. All right, let's pray and then we'll read. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can learn and, and grow as we submit to this habit of uh, turning to your word each day. God, I pray that uh, even through this story that seems somewhat personal and anecdotal uh, from the Apostle Paul, I pray that you speak to us. I pray that you show us truths about yourself, about your good news, and how that applies to our lives. Be with us today, Jesus. Amen. Philemon. From Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-laborer, to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that the faith you share with us may deepen your understanding of every blessing that belongs to you in Christ. I have had great joy and encouragement because of your love, for the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. So, although I have quite a lot of confidence in Christ, and could command you to do what is proper, I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. I, Paul, an old man, and even now a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus, I am appealing to you concerning my child, whose spiritual father I have become during my imprisonment, that is, Onesimus, who was formerly useless to you, but is now useful to you and to me. I have sent him, who is my very heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him so that he could serve me in your place during my imprisonment for the sake of the gospel. However, without your consent, I did not want to do anything, so that your good need, good deed, would not be out of compulsion, but from your own willingness. 
For perhaps it was this reason that he was separated from you for a little while, so that you would have him back eternally, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dear brother. He is especially so to me, and even more so to you now, both humanly speaking and in the Lord. Therefore, if you regard me as a partner, accept him as you would me. Now, if he has defrauded you of anything or owes you anything, charge what he owes to me. I, Paul, have written this letter with my own hand. I will repay it. I could also mention that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, let me have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Since I was confident that you would obey, I wrote to you because I knew that you would do even more than what I am asking you to do. At the same time, also, prepare a place for me to stay, for I hope that through your prayers I will be given back to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ, greets you. Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my co-laborers, greet you too. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. When you read this, do you wonder why Paul doesn't just come out and say that slavery should be abolished? Slavery was an existing social construct. It was rooted in the fibers of that society. For instance, Aristotle, in his Nicomachean Ethics, calls a slave simply a living tool. So what Paul does is he fights for Onesimus' identity as a brother in Christ. And this is brilliant. This gives the slave a status that ultimately will undermine the whole establishment of slavery. And that's what we eventually see. A few hundred years later, we see Gregory of of Nyssa, and then later Chrysostom. They argue against slavery based on cases founded in theology. Eventually, here in America, slavery was abolished based on principles that were rooted in Christian ethics. Here's what I walk away with today. In Jesus, social and cultural barriers are destroyed. Paul, who is a ridiculously well-educated Roman citizen, personally takes up the case of this poor runaway thief and slave. For Paul, in Christ, there really was no Jew, no Gentile, no male, no female, no slave, no free. These constructs were real in that day. Men were more privileged than women. Obviously, slaves were not privileged, what their masters were. But Paul, through what he does in this short book, he shows that these boundaries are destroyed in Jesus. And and quite wonderfully, Paul actually expects Philemon, through the transformative power of Jesus Christ, to break from these cultural norms and see this slave as his brother. This is beautiful. And this is good news for us. Wherever we fall in society, we are made in the image of God and exalted as children of God. It should also give us pause. That person next to us, whatever situation we're in, they may not be of the same class as we are or have what we have, been privileged like we are, but they're equally created in God's image and deserve to be treated as such. That's all for this book. We will be starting the wonderful book of Luke, written by Luke the physician, uh, the gospel of Jesus, starting tomorrow. See you then.